Hi YouTube, Timothy Unkert here. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about Emacs Markdown mode. Now, I started setting up Emacs the other day for Python, and then I thought, you know what, I should explore this Markdown mode. A lot of people use org mode, but I find myself gravitating back to Markdown mode for uh, writing blogs, like for instance, my 90 style blog experiment I've been talking about on the channel. So I wanted to see what Emacs has to offer in terms of Markdown. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a review about what I found and talk a little bit about the options. So one of the things I found that I'm using a lot is links. Okay. All right. So to do a link, you're going to do control C control L. All right. Which is pretty explanatory um, because you know L for links. So let's do a link. So control C control L. And I hope you can see this. I'll try and zoom in at the bottom here. You're going to enter in a URL. So uh, I'm going to do HTTPS. Let's do google.com. Okay, then it's going to ask you for the link text. Uh, now, I can type in a word Google. The one shortcoming of this is when I try and hit a space, it goes no match. So it's really kind of telling me, uh, just put in one word. So do that. And then optionally, I can put in a title, like uh, something like link to Google. Okay. And then it will come up with the link and generate the link for me. So that's pretty nice. Okay. One thing that I would like to have is be able to enter more than one word as the link text, because sometimes I like to enter a phrase, but that's easily enough um, to fix. If I just go here, I can, I can put uh, something like Google link or, or something more descriptive. All right. So that uh, isn't that big of a deal, but it is one thing I would like to have modified with it. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is images. Uh, so with images, it's very similar uh, in the command to links. So let's do control C and then control I, which makes sense. I for image, right? So let's insert an image. So I'm going to do control C, control I, and it's going to give me my URL to the image. Um, Let's go and find an image on Wikimedia Commons. So let's go here and we'll get one. We'll get uh, an image online. So let's see if we can find a good image for Emacs. Okay, so eh, do this image here. And let's get more details. And let's use this file on the web. So we can get the file URL here. So let's just copy that. Okay. So we'll copy that. And then we'll head back here and paste it in with Control Y. And then we have the alt text. And like the link, you can't really add a space in the alt text. So uh, I could say something like I could type picture, but then when I hit a space, um, it just says no match. So a picture of Emacs, it's going to be all together. And, you know, for the title, I could say Emacs logo or something like that. Okay. So now you're going to see that all text in blue right there. Um, if I go back, let me go back a little quicker. So we can, you know, space it out if we want. But that's one little thing that it doesn't quite have. Okay. Um, okay. So the other thing you can do is you can do a heading. So I'm going to do one of those right now. So uh, this is a first level, move this heading. And the command for that is control um, C, control. S and then H. Okay, so that's how you get a heading. Now the thing is, if I want to put another heading in, so I'm going to do Control C, Control S, and then H. It gives me another first level heading. It gives me the same one as the one above. So if I want to make this a second level heading, um, this is a second level heading. 
Now, if I do this again, I'm going to get another second level heading. Now, with Markdown, you really only need the two hashtags in front of the heading. You don't need the two ones that are following. It's kind of a styling thing, uh, just so it's the Markdown document is a little bit more readable. Um, I'm not really sure uh, how useful this is because it's pretty easy for me to just make another heading, right? So uh, that's one way to make a heading though. If you forget how to make a heading, you do control C, control S, which are a lot of the key chord combinations that start before you do some type of thing in Markdown mode. Okay, so let's go down. Let's talk about text styling. Okay, so I'm gonna do control C, control S, do another heading, we'll say text styling, okay? And for text styling, we're gonna start with a key uh, chord combination, control C, control S, and then we're gonna do whatever we wanna do. So uh, we start with that, and then let's say we wanna do uh, bold text, what we're going to do here is we're going to do control C, control S, and then B. Okay, so let's do that. Control C, control S, B. Okay, it gives us bold text. Okay, um, now is that as useful as just having electric pair mode and going like this? Um, let me make sure that, well, that's actually, then I would have to type bold text. I guess electric pair mode isn't doing it, isn't surrounding it, but I don't know if the keyboard combination uh, is any bit better, but if you don't remember all these things in Markdown, if you start, if you just remember control C, control S, you're going to get a big menu down here under the status bar of things you can do. For instance, let's say I forgot italic text. Um, I'd go and do, Control C, Control S, and then I'd see, I look down, I see, oh, italic, that's I, okay? So now this is italic text, okay? And uh, so that would be a way I could figure that out pretty quickly, um, how to do italic text in Markdown. If I wanna do, say, a block quote, again, Control C, Control S, Q, okay? Ah, that's how I do a block quote, because sometimes I forget that. Uh, so we'll say something like this is a block quote. Uh, Timmy. All right. And um, anyways, so uh, we could say that. Uh, that's a block quote. Um, doing inline code. So let's, again, control C, control S, and then C. Ah, oh, the back ticks. Um, this is inline code. So that's really where it helps. If you don't remember some of this stuff, um, you go, oh, okay, I'll do control C, control S. That's all I have to remember. And then I got like a menu with tons of styling options. One thing I can do is control C, control S, and you'll see down here it says for um, more, do control H. So let's do that, control H. Now, if I jump to the other window, take a look down here and jump to the other window, I can see, oh, uh, I want to insert uh, control C, control S1. That's going to insert a header one, header two. So that's interesting. So control C, control S2. Oh, that's a header two. That's a nicer way to insert a header. Uh, a nicer way to insert a header. I got this font pretty big. Okay, so there's a bunch of options that you can get there. Um, let's talk about horizontal rules. So to do that, control C, control S, and then the minus sign. No, oh, that's a horizontal rule. Now the font that I have is so big that it's wrapping around. If I just do uh, control X, control zero, it gets back to the normal size here. And that's in the, when it's the normal size, that's what you're gonna see, okay? I'm gonna increase the font again just for the video. In case anyone's watching on a phone, let's do a little bit larger. So we got it nice and big. Maybe maybe I had a little bit big before, okay? Uh, comment in the comments below uh, what your thoughts are on the font size. Okay, uh, 
footnotes. So we're going to do control C, control S, and then F. And we could put uh, some link here for a footnote and maybe put uh, some text here. Okay, so we've got ourselves a footnote. That's pretty cool. Uh, wiki links. I don't use wiki links, but you can do control C, control S, W. Okay, that gives a wiki link. So this is a wiki link. Okay. So I wouldn't know what a wiki link is, but if I, I could figure it out. Um, now, preview mode, uh, the regular preview mode, for some reason on a Chromebook, when I do it, it's control C, control C, P, and it opens up the terminal. It doesn't open up a browser. So that doesn't seem to work for me. But um, if I want to do live preview mode, I do control C, control C, L, and that then now opens uh, the preview below and you can see that, wow, I've got the image in there. That's pretty cool in this document that I'm writing. So th that I like, that's a nice feature. Um, I could go down here and just preview this file. Um, so it's pretty cool, okay? Uh, so let's close that out. And I close that out with Control X1, uh, just by the way, in case you're, unfamiliar with that. Uh, exporting to HTML is kind of like markdown mode. You do control C, control C, E. Okay, so uh, if I want to export this, I can do control C, control C, E. Okay, and then if I go to Dear Ed uh, and update, you'll see that I created a markdown file and I've got all this markdown. I've got all this HTML here. I created an HTML file. Sorry, I misspoke. Okay, um, all right. Let's go back and go back here and um, let's talk about uh, some of the GUI themes. Um, so you notice the headers are about the same as everything else in this theme. But if I change my themes, so let me customize themes. I notice this in the material theme. So let's see if we still notice this. Um, so if I go back here. Uh, I noticed that this text here in the heading is a little bit larger than um, the text that's the rest of the text. So with certain themes, the size of the headers is larger. Uh, there's some good syntax highlighting. So I like that. That's pretty cool. Um, so anyways, that's, that's a short look at markdown mode and a bit of a review. I Overall, I like it. There's some things I'd like to change about the links and the images in terms of the link text and the alt text. But outside of that, if you remember Control S, Control, uh, sorry, Control C, Control S, and Control C, Control C, those are the two main key chord combinations that start you off with a bunch of these options. So you might not have to remember all the things you need to know in Markdown. You just remember Control C, Control S, and Control C, Control C, and uh, you can get a lot of the things. It'll show up with your options below the status bar here. And like I said, if you do Control C, Control S, and then Control H, you get even more options. And there's tons to explore. I'm going to continue to explore this um, as I work on my 90 style blog. I actually did write a 90 style blog using markdown mode in Emacs this morning. I'll share that in the description below in case you want to read a little bit more about it. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. It really does help the channel grow. And I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.